Hey everyone, I'm back here with the video that you all have been waiting for, another episode of the MLB Time Capsule. Thanks so much for the wait. I've been doing a lot of these here because I have so much to cover, so I've been trying to take notes on a lot of these and, um, you know, figure out what I want to say. But we're back with this, and thanks for the views, thanks for all the new subscribers that I've had. I'm very grateful for that, so I'm going to be doing some more of these. And because it's starting to be successful, I might do some NBA and some NFL ones as well, but... Today we are back in the 1914 World Series. Yes, last time we left off, it's been a recap because it's been a while. The New York Giants lost once again. This time, however, the Braves now step up to the plate where they beat the Philadelphia Athletics in this World Series. So, 1914, Woodrow Wilson was president. Star Wars was far, far away. And the Chicago Cubs, wait for it, are not World Series champions. <laughs> ha! So, in this corner, led by Hall of Famers, Connie Mack, who was the owner, Frank Baker, Chief Bender, Eddie Collins, Drew Pinnock, and Eddie Plank, the defending World Series champions, the Philadelphia Athletics, a.k.a. Kansas City, a.k.a. Oakland Athletics. And in this corner, led by Hall of Famers, Johnny Evers, Rabbit Marnville. Yes, that was his name. Rabbit Marnville, you know, I wonder if rabbits, you know, all the rabbits must be happy. Yay! Representing the city of Boston, soon to be Milwaukee, and then soon to be Atlanta. The Boston Braves! So, I know what you all are thinking here. You're probably thinking, oh, well, well talk. The, the Athletics are going to win because, you know, they, they beat the Giants, and how could they lose to Boston? They lost to probably one of the greatest underdogs in the history of underdogs. So let's take a look here at my notes and get into this night in this um, wood series. So these Braves were known as the Miracle Braves because in July 4th, the Braves were in last place. They were um, 10 and a half. They were so far behind. And... Nobody thought that the Braves would catch up, but then they won the pennant by ten and a half games. Um, it's funny, the Braves' relatively unknown trio of starting pitchers basically had a abysmal combined record of 285 and 245, but they outperformed the Athletics' vaunted rotation, uh, 929 and 654, all-time record in four games. Um, Hank Gowdy... Wonder if he's related to maybe Kirk Gowdy? Maybe? He had uh, uh, .545 with five extra base hits and also drew five walks. In it. And it's funny in this series because the Braves lacked home field advantage. They ended up um, having to play at Fenway Park in the series, they were renting it from the Red Sox. And, you know, look at the Red Sox. Such helpful people. They really do care, don't they? They seem to want to help people. And one of the problems that Oakland... No, I just called them Oakland. I mean, Philadelphia, sorry. But that's okay. They're the Oakland Athletics today. Um, one of the problems that Philadelphia faced was that um, Connie Mack, back in the day, you know, he liked to bet on games as a um, as a uh, manager. You know, who have we seen before? Because... Apparently somebody else in Major League Baseball. Yes, we're going to get to his World Series. He liked to throw games too. Actually, two of them did. One of them, Pete Rose. Yeah, we'll get to him. Um, anyway, um, so, Connie Mack and his ways, he didn't want his players to try hard because he would like to throw games. And, you know, a lot of players were irritated at how Connie Mack was. And as I said in the previous episode, Connie Mack was the kind of guy who, if he didn't like you, he would bench you. 
And if he did like you, you'd play. And there was a lot of people that Connie Mack did not like on these teams. And because of his gambling ways and because of just his arrogance and he thought he was all that, it really came back to, uh, to um, bite the athletics because the next year after this, um, Chief Bender and Eddie Plank would jump to the uh, Federal League in 1915 because they were fed up with Connie Mack and, you know, his arrogant ways that he had. Um, and then after this year, the A's went from having the best record to having the worst record in two years because Connie Mack broke up the dynasty, the first of many that Connie Mack would break up. So, so let's take a look here at uh, the summary. So the Braves actually swept the Athletics. Yes, they swept. They're making this probably a boring board series, but it was fun in the fact that nobody expected the Braves to come out of nowhere like they did. I mean, everybody went in assuming that Philadelphia was going to win because Boston was so bad for pretty much the whole year that everybody was like, oh yeah, well, Boston's going to lose. But guess what? They didn't. Um, Boston pretty much had their way with Philadelphia. Uh, game one, Braves had a field day. They won 7-1. Game two, Braves won one nothing. Uh, game three, an extra inning game, the Braves won 5-4. And in game four, the Braves won 3-1. Um, so, no, and the Braves, it's funny, Boston out-hit Philadelphia combined 33 hits for the Braves, 22 hits for the Athletics. The Braves scored 16 runs compared to the Athletics' 6, and the Braves committed more errors. But that didn't matter because if you go back and you look at any of the stats in the series, Boston was just out hitting them. And as I've said so many times, I will continue to say, in this early days of the World Series, you could get away with having really bad pitching. You look at the Braves' pitching. Okay, they outperformed Philadelphia. But their hitting was so good, they just put runners on base. And they would just score consistently whenever they wanted. And Philadelphia, it doesn't matter how good your pitching is. If your hitting sucks, nobody is going to, you know, take you seriously. And I guess Connie Mack forgot to tell his boys to show up. Or maybe it was because he benched his whole rotation because maybe they sucked. Because that's what Connie Mack does. Or that's what he used to do. He died, so he can't do that anymore. Although he probably owns a team up there, and he's probably doing that. Um, the winning players got $2,812, and the losing team got $2,032. So a nice payday for all of them. Total attendance was 111009 Average attendance was 27752 But anyway, folks, you know, this is one of those series where, you know... Nobody expected um, Boston to win, as I said before, they were so bad. And it's funny, you know, um, Connie Mack actually got into a fight with uh, Chief Bendu, um, and this was well documented in the media at the time. Um, he gave him a week off, told him to scout the Braves, and Bendu took a vacation. And when Connie Mack went to confront him, Chief Bendu is quoted as having said, why should I check out a bunch of Bush League hitters, meaning that, that the A's and their overconfident ways thought, well, the Braves are not in our league. We're going to beat them easily, so why should we have to play them? Sounds like a certain other team from uh, 1904. Remember the Giants didn't want to play the Red Sox because they thought that they were in the Bush League? Remember them? Yeah, that's exactly this, but the Athletics played, and guess what? They got beat. You want to know Why? Because the Athletics are arrogant, that's why. And I'm glad that Connie Mack lost. Serves you right, Connie Mack, for throwing games. Guess you should have thought of that before you started doing it, but... We have another first-time World Series winner. The Boston Braves, a.k.a. Kansas City, a.k.a. Atlanta Braves. Get a World Series, their first ever. Yeah, so now the city of Boston has two World Series winners and the Athletics... Well, thanks for coming, but down goes Philadelphia. Remember, down goes Frazier, or down go the Athletics. And they're down for the 10 count, and they're not getting back up. So we won't be seeing them for quite a little while. And the city of Boston celebrates, and Rabbit Marinville can go back to the uh, Rabbit's place and celebrate by eating carrots all day, and Johnny Evers can live happily ever after knowing he won, and for Frank Baker and Chief Bender and Eddie Collins and all of them, sorry.
it's not all sunshine and roses anymore for you guys. But folks, that was the 1914 World Series featuring a team from Boston and Pennsylvania. Now, the next time that we talk, it'll be 1915. And guess what? We have two teams from Boston and Pennsylvania again. And I know what you're thinking, but but walk talk. There's there there's no way that it could be the um. There's no way that that it could be the Braves and the Athletics, could it? But you'd be wrong, Watson. You know who it is? The Red Sox are back. That's right. Red Sox are here once again. You know who they're playing? The other team from Pennsylvania, the Phillies. <gasps> Another first time team. Could Boston win two in a row? Is that possible? Could they do it? Yes, they do. So, <laughs> I just gave it away, but you'll have to wait and see exactly how they do it. So, be sure to subscribe to Walk Talk 21 for more great videos. And maybe time capsule video games, whatever else I want to talk about. Thanks for watching. And congratulations to the Braves. I won in the World Series in 1914. And I'll see you all next time in 1915.